All right, it is a trolling type day. So we got our manja stuff here. We got mojos and spoons. Okay. You see how I store them. Got a lot of spoons here, tails here. And I keep the rigs in these here. I know these things are a pain in the tail to store. And I have all my mojos and trailers here, okay? So we're gonna use a mojo and spoon combo. The mojo keeps the spoon down so we can use regular tackle. We don't need wire tackle or big heavy stuff because your mojo will pull that spoon down nicely. And we're gonna do a mojo with another chute rig. So the mojo is basically a parachute rig that's very, very heavy, and it will hold down any other kind of baits you wanna pull. So when I say a tandem rig, it's basically a mojo, which is a parachute rig, trailing a smaller parachute rig. Either that or it will, the trailer will be a spoon. And we're shallow here, so we're only 20 feet of water, 25 feet. So the spoon mojo combo is is killer. So we're gonna mix it up a bit. We're gonna start with uh, mojos here. And you can see the mojo is the heavier one. Okay, this one's 24 ounces. And then our trailer will be a lighter one. Okay, this one here is six ounces. So we have 24 and a six, okay. And we're gonna go ahead and you know you can use five gallon buckets for this. Guys use all different types of uh, methods to store these. This has been pretty good for us. Okay, I have these rigged so the trailer is half the length as the mojo line. So you'll see that first swivel is about five foot and then another five foot to the mojo. I have the mojo on the long line so the mojo is deeper and the trailer is higher. This way I cover a little more of the water column. You know, they'll stay probably two or three feet of, of different depth, anywhere four or five foot depending if I'm going fast or slow or current. You can reverse it if you want. Some guys put the mojo on the short one and the trailer on the long one. Uh, I don't like to do that usually because they're both about the same depth when you do that. I like them to be at little different depths. So, real simple. We got heavy snap swivels here. Snap that baby on. You can bend it down with pliers if you want to. Probably not a bad idea if I was in a tournament or something, I would bend them down. And that's it, this one's ready to go. Most important part about trolling for stripers in fall, it's all about trolling, right? You gotta have these ready. Poppers, spoon, poppers, have an arsenal ready. Because we'll come through, man, sometimes these birds are smashing the water and you better have something tied on and ready to go. Because your heart will explode when you see those fish busting and you don't have anything rigged up. Okay, so we have our tandem rig ready. The boat's doing three miles an hour. I put the trailer in first. Okay, then the mojo goes in. Make sure your baits are hanging nice and straight. Okay, and then the mojo goes in. All right, I use a line counter for this just because I want to know exactly where my baits are. Uh, you don't have to. You can guesstimate it, use your own method. It's not very deep here. And it's 20 foot. See that I just felt the bait touch bottom. Probably don't have to put them out more than 60 feet. All right, we're rigging one up here, Mojo Spoon Combo. 24 ounce Mojo. It's that copper color. I've always liked copper and bronze. And we're gonna give her a go. Now I have the spoon on the shorter leader. Now it does kill the action of the spoon somewhat, being such a short leader, but it makes the spoon flutter a little tighter and it's a little easier for the fish to find the hook. You know, some spoons get these big wide patterns and uh, it can be tricky for the fish to get the hook. I've seen some underwater footage which is hysterical. You see the fish trying to get it and he just can't hone in on it. And you can put a treble hook on here, add a hook if you want to, but 
I like going with the shorter leader, tightens up the pattern a little bit, makes it a little easier for the fish to get his mouth on. So we're going white and copper, we'll see what she can do. one back slow so you don't tangle them up. If that spoon hits, you know, gets tangled in, you let it out too too quick, the spoon will tangle in the mojo line. You don't want that. So just go nice and slow with it. I just let it creep out. This one straight up in the rod holder. How far are you going out? It was 30 with this one. See, unlike the other, unlike the other ones, the, uh, the spoon actually pulls the rig up. Right. Six more line out to get that spoon deep. I don't like using wire. I don't like using, I don't even like using braid. Uh, advantage over the wire is you don't have to have uh, special gear for it, and you really limber rods with wire need to keep all rigs rigged up for just that wire wire line right. it vibrates the heck out of your the screws come out of your reels and they vibrate this, <laughs> that steel line is brutal on your gear and you lose a lot of fish because you have no stretch fish come off right get this bad boy out First fall fish on the Mojo Tandem Rig, Tony Maja. Chartreuse on chartreuse. What did Mike do? <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> hey man, they all they all can't be giants, you know? <laughs> oh, let's see if we get uh -huh. the, the, the look on it. Ready? How does it look? <laughs> Enormous. <laughs> Get him, Good fish. Good fish, brother. Holy macaroni. I knew it was big, brother. That's I knew like, it was big. Oh, that's like a 40. <laughs> Holy sh. 42 pounds. That's right. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, let it go now.